Hey, what's up guys? This video today is on motion blur and pixel response. The last video was on input lag, which is a metric that I believe is a little overrated, but the one metric I never really focused on and I paid for it in the end was pixel response and motion blur. Motion blur is pretty self-explanatory. It's the blur you see when something crosses the screen. Pixel response is really more about how long it takes for each individual color or pixel to go from white to gray. And the amount of time it takes to make that transition results in a blur or in a smearing, all depends on the display. So when you guys are looking at different websites, you know, you'll see all those metrics that we always talk about, input lag, peak brightness. The last one anyone really thinks about, again, unless you're coming from a really low input lag, zero response time monitor is motion blur. But it's the one thing that makes a lot of us stop and say, hey, something's wrong with my picture. And a lot of times we feel that that's actually input lag. When in reality, a lot of times it's a slow pixel response of the display. Now, real quick, this is a PC game. What's amazing is a lot of times we'll think that that pixel response is only fast moving objects. And I will tell you the displays that I had that struggled with it in the past it wouldn't just show up on fast moving animation. It wouldn't show up on a Street Fighter game. It would show up on a lot of slow panning. My camera's actually blurring, but you know, you can move this around. And this is in standard game mode. There isn't any motion interpolation or black frame insertion. This is just the image. That you're seeing. Now, on some of the other displays that I had that I struggled with, games slow like this, Ethan Carter, these slower games were really blurring. And I found that I had to do too many tricks with motion to try and fix it. So these are the things that take away your immersion. Not just input lag, but if the image blurs, especially in gaming, it makes it very hard to aim, makes it very hard to focus. So quickly, if we go to artsings.com, which you'll see here, give that a second to, is the response time. Now this is the response time for the Sony 900E. It's way at the bottom guys, but when you're looking at pixel response, it'll talk about, as we get down to motion blur, as we get to response time, 4.7 milliseconds, 100%, 10.7 milliseconds, which is a great number. Now this is a an example of a poor pixel response. And while we won't really always look at that, when you see that in a display, it's the last thing you're thinking about, but what ends up happening is it really does affect most of your viewing. And I picked up displays regardless of these numbers and thought that I wouldn't be sensitive to it. And some people aren't. But what's interesting is that made it to where I actually couldn't focus or couldn't use a display at all. So it is a huge number, something to really keep in mind that none of us really think about. And other than artings, a lot of um, reviewers don't really break it down. They'll kind of approach it more in terms of sports, hockey, football. Um, it's really more than that. It's really how quickly that pixel changes color and then back again. So in some games or movies, it'll pixel, and in others, what'll happen is it'll smear. And I've had some very high-end flagship displays that had poor pixel response that they were just unplayable. To the point to where in movies, the black bars would actually ripple, if you can actually believe that. So when is it important? It's important in gaming, it's important in any transition but especially fast animation, things like Transformers movies where there's a lot of rolling and moving. But even in these slow games where you're panning in a third person shooter, you know, behind say Drake or Last of Us, when I would pan behind the figure, I would have to slow down. So this is normal, but I would have to literally crawl. Now in something like Titanfall, where it's all about fast action and movement. 
it's critical. So for a lot of you guys that are asking about input lag, hey, how's, in, how's the input lag in this game versus that game? I play a lot of Battlefield, I play a lot of Overwatch. The input lag can be, you know, can be mil, you know, very, very minimum, but if you don't have the pixel response, then you're going to find aiming to be very, very difficult. So again, think those transitions. Now this is also in game mode, there is no motion enabled. So we're not cheating in any way. But it's just something I want you guys to keep in mind for those of you that are picking up displays. Um, OLED is interesting because OLED has what's perceived as perfect motion. The challenge is it comes off as judder because the refresh rate doesn't always match what you're watching. So when you guys say that OLED has terrible motion, it's actually quite the opposite. It has amazing motion. It just comes off as judder depending on what content you're watching. Sometimes people struggle in game mode because um, OLED struggles with their motion settings because they have motion. So their motion interpolation doesn't really help. It actually causes issues. Where a lot of people are talking about the new OLEDs you're seeing in CES are going to add black frame insertion to then help with that. So really important guys, pixel response when you're looking at it, the bottom of the reviews, Really look at those numbers and you'll see that to me it's more important than a lot of the other metrics. You could have a t TV that's 1400 nits, but if this part of it doesn't work well, then the TV is not really going to benefit you. And you know, one last scene where it does really matter for those of you that don't play games is in fast moving motion in animation. So playing this movie, which is actually a great test because there's so much happening, I played this on, again, a couple of my flagship displays, and the pixelation made it impossible to view. And then as I added motion interpolation to try and combat it, it pixelated even worse. Meaning that if you are somebody that really loves that soap opera effect, because some of you guys love that effect, I like it in certain cases, but if you love that effect, the pixel response needs to allow that to where even if the motion is there, it'll cause that pixelation and it'll completely take you out. Now I'm not talking about random artifacting that you see around objects at times. I'm talking about the actual image pixelating across the screen. So that's my video on pixel response, guys. It's a super important metric that to me should be at the top of the list other than at the bottom of the list. So when you're picking out these displays, especially in 2018, we get hung up on those numbers that we've always talked about. When in reality, there's some basic ones to look for. And to me, pixel response and motion blur are some of the most important that nobody thinks about and nobody talks about. So when doing your research, move down to the bottom of the page and just look up the pixel response or motion blur of your particular display. Again, monitors can have an instantaneous one, but with displays, especially displays with smart features, it's like having a slow computer sometimes. And you might find that your favorite display has everything you're looking for, but if it blurs whenever you move, or it blurs when you're watching fast moving action scenes, it will really take you out of it. And it's something that is also really important, guys. It's not a defect in the display. So if you want to return a display based on a slow pixel response, you will have a serious issue with it because it's not inherently a, it's an inherent flaw, but it's not consider, considered a defective panel. So thank you as always, guys. If you have any questions on pixel response or anything else, hit me up in the comments. You can also find me on Instagram at whisperstatus74. And um, again, I thank you. You guys are amazing. And I will talk to you guys soon. Um, the videos coming up will be uh, kind of what we're looking for in 2018. If you guys should wait or not, that'll be the next video. And if you have any ideas for videos that you want to see, let me know. And again, thank you as always. Have a great night.